know who Caitlin Clark is? I Amber? do know who Caitlin Clark okay. is. That's a damn shame that you know who Caitlin Clark but is. I know who Angel Reese is. And I also, I mean, hold on, I know a little okay. bit. I know okay. a little bit. All right. I was about to say, <laughs> damn it, they got you too. No. And I'm not, you know what, you know what this is the problem? Because Caitlin Clark now has a lot of pressure on her that she doesn't deserve to have. You know what I'm saying? Like she's and also, going to. And also, there are other amazing players so, yes but what i'm saying is because there's such a frenzy around this one person and she didn't ask for it yeah you know she just showed up and played and because this country is dysfunctional it's turned into the battle which has forced me into like i'm oh we choose a side all right i'm definitely choosing this side you know yeah. and it becomes like you know a line in the sand again and it's absolutely not her fault it's not her fault but I, i'm gonna put this out there she was the number one pick deservedly let me just say that um she, indiana picked her up number one overall and um she's gonna be playing with Aaliyah boston who was uh last year's uh rookie of the year in the WNBA. also dawn staley acolyte uh mm -hmm. who was on that team that championship team uh so they're gonna be both playing together number one she was number one last year for the indiana fever so that team is stacked maybe maybe because there's a lot of talent out there uh, number two was the defensive player of the year. Uh, her name is Cameron Brink. She brought Steph Curry's mama, who's her godmama, to the to the WNBA, uh, which was at the Brooklyn. It was at BAM, Brooklyn Academy of Music. I think it oh, was at I BAM last night. Yep. And um, she's going to she's she was uh, from Stanford. She's going to the L.A. Sparks, which is cool because, you know, Steph Curry and them uh, are in Cali as well. Um, number three. Four, three was Rakia Jackson. No, number three was um, my, my, our sister uh, Camila Cardoso, who is Dawn Staley's center, six seven from Brazil. Our Brazilian sister, Brazil, by the way, has the largest number of African descended people anywhere in the world outside of the actual continent of Africa herself. Um, and she she get, she went number three, and she's going to be playing with Angel Reese, who went at I think number seven. Uh, they're going to the Chicago Sky together, so that those rivals are going to now become teammates. Uh, but there's a lot of eyes on the WNBA, and so a post went out with uh, Caitlin Clark's salary. Okay, I saw that. as a, okay, so and and there's a lot of commentary about like how can they make? Oh my God! All right, so Caitlin Clark rookie contract, four years, three hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars. She's going to be making $76,535 in 2024. The season kicks off next month. She's going to be making $78,000 in 2025, $85,000 in 2026, and $97,582 in 2027. That's her option year if she chooses to stay. And people are like, this is ridiculous. And I'm also, though, at the same time thinking, that's not bad money coming out of college. I remember I was making forty thousand dollars coming out of college. I thought I was doing something. This seventy six thousand. How many y'all making that coming out? You could argue about whether it's sports, or whatever. But the season is short. They play from May to like October, I think, or something. It's it's a very short it's season. Only like forty games or something, yeah. right? Yeah, seven and, games, and something. And they're playing basketball. I'm just saying it's fun, and. Yes, it's not like the men because they're not drawing like the men. They're, they're yeah. not bringing in the, the the booties in the seats and the corporate sponsorships. So we can have that discussion. It will never be parity until there's parity, like in women's tennis. Right. Women's tennis rates this higher than the men's. Serena, when Billie Jean King and Venus Williams fought for equity, it was warranted. Ain't nobody was watching the men. They were all watching Venus Serena and all of that women's tennis that's parody soccer during the the world cup stuff the women's soccer yes they sued and they they you know there's there's something there's a case to be made in terms of ratings there's no comparison except for the ncaa's this year which i mean it's starting can... right like can we just say that it's starting i think it would be really great for us to recognize that perhaps we are at the beginning of the change so if we are at the beginning of the change and we'd like to see it, then we should all make the steps to make it happen. So we should be attending WNBA games. We should be like, if you want that, if you want her to make more, because if she were male, she would be making millions is the way it's being framed. You know, I feel like the way to move closer to giving these people that is to pay attention to the game. People are not paying attention to the WNBA the same way. It's not happening. 
Where are that the dollars all, going honestly. to come from? Where are the it's to your point, it's advertising dollars. The advertisers are not advertising over there because that's not where the people are. So are we gonna bring the people or are we gonna complain? That's that's all I'm saying. We have so much power to do so many things. Yes. But flapping our gums and complaining about things being unfair, that's never gonna change anything. And I mean, you know, to your point, you're right. The NCAA women's game outdistance the men in ratings yep nil deals for amber you know excuse me uh angel reese and caitlin clark i think angel reese has the highest nil deal just like she's making two million dollars a year caitlin's probably gonna have a lot more money a lot of eyeballs on her so it comes with the with the people so you're right you're right and, and they can make a case in the ncaa's that those women should have pay parity those coaches and me, probably many of those coaches do Dawn staley's making like three three point five million dollars maybe that doesn't compare to maybe coach k when he was at his height he had a whole damn stadium name for him but you know he had more championships too at that point but let's let, let, to your point let's watch it catch up is anybody outraged by these salaries because i'm not I'm really not. 866-801-8255. Not outraged by it. I, not I just, outraged. Maybe disappointed. Know. But outraged. I'm not outraged. Maybe disappointed. I think people are, I think in the world where we are having conversations about the work that women put on, put in, and them being compensated for it in an equitable way, this feels in line with that. However, the NBA, the WNBA, um, the NFL, they, those are not, they are corporations, but they are not corporations in the way that we are going to our workplaces every day. So what motivates your company to pay you is who is buying products. This is a little different. They need eyeballs. So if we want the parity to happen, then we got to figure out how we're going to give the people the eyeballs. And if we're not giving them the eyeballs, then the parity is never going to happen because the money got to come from somewhere. Period. And I bring this up because we get outraged over things without any thought. Okay. Put it in perspective. And again, I am an ally. Okay. <laughs> like I want the women to get parity, but parity has to come from a place, as Amber was saying. The WNBA currently makes $60 million a year. Now, maybe with Caitlin Clark in it, it's going to do a lot better because she brings, but from its inception, it had a flaw. A flaw. You hmm. didn't go where the people were. Okay, for example, if you were starting the WNBA when they started it, you needed to have a team in Yukon in Stores, Connecticut, and you needed to have a team in Tennessee where you had the largest, where they would sell out on a regular basis. You needed to yes. have a team somewhere in, maybe even play at Stanford because it's summertime. Play, play in the places where the people are. Louisiana Tech, maybe you need a team in Louisiana. Why did you go to the damn garden you went to the, you know, to the major ma male arenas. It was silly. It was a stupid. You're, you're marketing a game for, you know, to that's a different audience. Yeah. In a male dominant. It was dumb from the beginning. Now you've you've created and they've had to, you know, figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Over the years. But from its inception, whoever was coming up with the ideas, stupid, it was stupid. But I digress. Sixty million dollars the NBA made uh, and media rights. That contract's expiring in 2025. In comparison, the NBA is in the midst of a $24 billion television deal that pays $2.7 billion annually, plus the league is expected to get another $60 billion and another $72 billion when it reno renegotiates its TV deal this summer. Wow. There's a That's vast a difference. Huge difference. That's now, billion people, with a B. Yes. Uh, Victor uh, Wembanyama, who I love, by the way, I, I, that young man, he actually makes me want to watch this, this boring ass Spurs. Uh, the rookie, uh, his four year deal, fifty five million dollar contract in comparison. But it's not we're not comparing apples and apples. So no. let's not do that. We were talking about pay disparity and it's like I feel like we just want to be outraged. There's not a lot of common sense in the conversations that we have. I just I'm just going to say it. That's true. You know, yes. Want more pay? We got to bring more eyeballs. I'm, I'm never going to complain about that. We're going to just roll up our sleeves and go go get them because uh, that's how we got here. Let's uh, take some calls, Amber. Let's uh, head over to Tennessee. Mike, welcome to the Karen Hunter Show. Hello, sir. Hey, thank you, ladies, uh, for taking my call. I, uh, I It was breaking news to me when I heard you announce how much Caitlin Clark was going to get paid. 
the the thing is, I'm a huge uh, uh, women's college basketball fan and a little bit on the WNBA side. But I do think over time, if you look at the trend lines, the, the women's game has gained in popularity. Like, this was the best class in quite some time when it came to the college players coming mm-hmm. out. Look, ESPN uh, draft for the first time this particular year. Um, you, when you look at the results of the of March Madness, the women outperformed the, the guys or, or the young men. So That's the trend lines is showing a great deal of popularity with the women's game. Mm-hmm. The media needs to catch up to that. True. And just one final thing, Caitlin Clark, she's going to make a lot of money off endorsements and, and sponsorships and stuff like that on the side. You right. know, so she will get some money there. But it also makes me think of Brittany uh, Grant in terms of what she had to do in order to, like, just get, keep some checks coming in in order to just stay I mean, afloat. But, but, but hold on. Yeah, I mean, you, you say you know this this thing, but women have been playing overseas. I mean, Lynette Woodard had played for the Gold, Globetrotters. She still may hold, you know, not not that she had three pointers in her arsenal, as she mentioned. So it was not a one for one comparison. But yeah, she had to play for the Globe Trotters because there was no place for her to play. You know, Cynthia Cooper was the star of the WNBA, but she was like the third or fourth player on that US, U, USC team with with the, the McGee twins and with Cheryl Miller, who was injured in a pickup game. She might have been the, the one of those breakout stars. We all need – if you think about even the NBA, the NBA was not making money until there was Magic and Bird with that same kind of tension. It's it's personalities that bring it, you know, to the, to the people's attention, right? And then there was Jordan. Then it was Jordan, then it was the, the Detroit, but there was rivalries, right? There was the Lakers in Boston, it was De- Detroit and Chicago. And, you know, we, we got we, we started picking sides and got into it based on the, the personalities. You you're telling me that basketball wasn't they weren't great talents, you know, before before Magic and Bird? That's when they really started making money. Dr. J didn't make that kind of money. And Dr. J, I mean Walt Frazier, you know, Pearl Monroe, like there were players that were incredible before Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, but they brought the from the college game. Maybe there's a parallel, right? Magic and Bird in college were rivals, and then they brought that to the NBA, and then you, you created this other thing with, Ma- with Michael Jordan that just took it to the other level. Maybe Caitlin Clark is the Michael Jordan of the – of the W, I don't know. We'll see. I we'll mean, see. Personality. We'll see. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll see. But you know what? Michael Jordan's personality wasn't all of that. If we're being honest, Spike Lee made that happen. Is it the shoes? Is it the shoes? Is it the shoes? Mike, is it the shoes? Sometimes I dream that he is me. Like we got caught up like Mike, and all he had to do was positioning. Show up and smile so and it's drink positioning. Him. Yes. So it's positioning. So then the question becomes are you going to put the same machine behind positioning her? I, my inclination would be at this moment, probably not the same machine, but I think mm-hmm. that that could create the opportunity. I mean, yeah. if, if the same machine is put behind the personality. I think the machine will, I mean, it's again, it's, it's capitalism. It is. Amber, and right now, Caitlin Clark is hot. If you're any kind of company, State Farm, she had a State Farm commercial. She was on Saturday Night Live. Her team didn't win. She did not win. Yeah. Her whole team was at Saturday Night Live. They have billboards in Times Square with her. State Farm, Jake from State Farm was there when she got drafted, giving her a hug. Yes, it's already happening. It's already, yeah. the machine is already, already there. So I, I think a year or two from now, we will see something different. But that's how the game changes. That's how the money changes. When the money comes in, then everybody can get money. Brittany Griner and countless other women had to play overseas to augment and they became millionaires overseas, right? Because they can play in these countries making a lot of money. Hell, uh, Steph, Steph Marbury, Stefan Marbury is, is a God in China. There are statues erected to Stefan Marbury. He's got his own sneaker. Like this is a global space right now. And it would be really wise if there was an African shoe company, which there is, I'm just thinking there, you know, Give a contract to Angel Reese. Like, let's let's go. Let's think out of the box. I feel like there's money there that no one's minding because we're lazy and we're only looking at the Coca-Colas and the Pepsis and the Popeyes and the bull crap. 
and we're not seeing that there's a whole cadre of companies that need a personality. Listen, Angel Reese showed up last night looking like, I mean, she had on the outfit, yeah. okay? Yeah. And the tooth to match, she had on a cap to match the damn. I was like, God, this is this is what that looks like. You know, she was ready to slay. It was it was wonderful to watch. Um, and I thank the caller, uh, even though he, he was just talking. I don't know what he's talking about. All right, Nick in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Carrot Out the Show. That's all right. We all got opinions. Hey, Nick. Uh, thanks, Karen, for taking my call. Hi. <laughs> Oh, so it's, it's funny. The caller before did say that for the first time, ESPN has the WNBA draft when it's been on for like several years in a row. So that's, that's nothing new. But okay, can you uh, can, can you my, keep still, sir? Because we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, my, Golly, my it's a radio show. All right. <laughs> oh, but well, um, but yeah, I was looking up tickets. So I'm here in Philly of uh, some WNBA games, and man, whether it's the Mystics in DC or the Liberty in New York. You're going to pay like 200 to $400 to see Caitlin Clark play. And even in D.C. when Angel Reese makes her homecoming back to the DMV, that's, them tickets are even more than Caitlin Clark, like Indiana Fever tickets. So wow. they're really about to squeeze and make a grip, at least in the stadiums, on these games. And, you know, I'll, I'll pay it. I'm going to go. See? It's basketball. I love basketball. I'm going to check Listen, it out. I, I love that. And I love – Nick, you better – you know, it's also, um, Amber, the, the Washington Mystics had an opportunity to bring Angel Reese closer to home. She's from Baltimore. Oh, wow. She's from Baltimore. Y'all, y'all, I was like, who's running the asylum here? Like, y'all don't really want to make money. There's a reason why you got six million. It's like, do you have no creative geniuses working? That would have been to- perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes. I mean, Caitlin Clark's going to Indiana, which is right close to Iowa. Exactly. You know, it's right there. She's going to bring all of the people. That's a drive for folk from Iowa. That is nothing. You got Angel Reese. The Mystics could have had Angel Reese. And y'all... Really, y'all? Really, y'all? Y'all? Y'all had her on the board. You like, people are not thinking about the. That's what I'm saying. Like the muscle behind the machine to create the personality to generate the juice that makes people want to have the rivalry. Like even with if you just even put the racial stuff aside, part of what made a lot of people watch was the rivalry. Yes. It was like, oh, what happened on the court? Like, and I, I mean, that's what got me tuned in because I don't really watch any sports. But it got me tuned in because I'm like, oh, racial, wait, that's hold on, DEI stuff, let me tune in. Oh, wait, there's more to this? But is the machine being thoughtful about how to create the kind of personality magnetism that is going to drive the income, the attention, the ads, so that, you know, these women can be paid? Well, here's the thing. 866-801-8255. I feel like in many ways the way a lot of programming for Black people is through the lens of a, like a Norman Lear. I'm going to say it like that. A lot of marketing for women is through the lens of a Norman Lear. <laughs> it's through the lens of somebody who is, it's, you know, it's, it's like people who program for children and they're not children, but they're, yeah. they're, they're really like maybe pedophiles. You know, it, you, it shows up. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah. it's, and I'm not saying that, you know, you need to be culturally attuned to program for, but there the are different ways. And like, who's the audience, right? Like, that's the other question, right? Who are you trying to attract? But that feels like a foundational right? question, if we're being honest. Like, Yes, it is. And yeah. I'm saying something. This is not a conversation about the WNBA. This is about how everything right. that we consume is put through a meat grinder. Right. It's prepared. Somebody, yes. Yes. It's processed food for us, <laughs> and it's not nourishing at all. We're getting exactly. high blood pressure and diabetes, y'all, off of this program. But it's delicious, and we're going to buy it, because you handed yes. it to us. <laughs> yes, and told us it was good. Oh, yes. man. All right, let's uh, take more calls, 866-801-8255. Brandon in San Diego. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, so, you know, like what you were just saying, like, with the consumer really does control everything at the end of the day, and, like, even if they did like a hashtag turn on the game, like if all the women in the U S just turn the game on, even if they didn't watch it, just turn the freaking game on. Like yes. you'd raise yes. the ratings a ton. Come you could on, do a Brandon. whole lot of stuff. Brandon, they need to so? hire you. You Come need on, to be solutions? hired. That was smart, right? Brandon needs to be hired. WNBA, if y'all listening, Brandon in San Diego, right there. Got some, that period. Turn on the game. With the hashtag. 
Yes. And have everybody. And then pull into Caitlin. You know, you got to flash. You can't see me. <laughs> Throw something else in there. Oh, my goodness. This is not, it's not rocket science. Thank you, Brandon. Matter of fact, get his number. He's smart. But, Brandon, let me find out some more stuff about you. Or what, what are you doing for a living right now, sir? Oh, damn it. Brandon ran. Come on, Brandon. We, you might have had a job today. Damn it, we're looking for people. <laughs> Say that.